Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will talk about circular convolution using tabular method. So, perform circular convolution of the two sequences using tabular method. And the sequences are given as x1 of n is equal to 2 comma 1 comma 2 comma minus 1. So, arrow is here. So, it represents n is equal to 0 term, right? And the second sequence x2 of n is given as what? 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4, right? Where this arrow term represent what? That this is what the value at n is equal to 0. Hope you are aware about this. Fine. And considered endpoint sequences x1 of n and x2 of n. So circular convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n yields endpoint sequence x3 of n. Okay. So basically here value of n is what? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 samples are there, right? So 4. So basically here also 4 samples are there. Here also we have 4 samples. So basically if you talk about the final sequence, right, which is basically a circular convolution of this two sequence, then it will be also four point sequence, right? So the value of n is what? Four. And the signals are what? Periodic in nature. Clear? Now to obtain x3 of n at n is equal to q, follow these steps. So what are the steps you have to follow? So step number one. So first of all, modify x1 of n to x1 of m and modify x2 of n to x2 of m. So if you see now x1 of m will become what? It will become 2 comma 1 comma 2 comma minus 1, right? And if you talk about x2 of m, so x2 of m will become what? So 1, right, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4. It is just an index change. So once it is done, what you have to do now? And represent them as a rows in a table. So now you have to represent x1 of m and x2 of m as a rows in a table. So let me show you that part also. We'll go parallelly, right? So we already know n is what? 4. So let's represent x1 of m. So x1 of m is defined from 0, right? So the value is 2, then 1, then 2, and then minus 1. And even x2 of m is from this location only. So what is the value? 1, 2, 3, 4. Step 1, done. Fine. Now let's see the steps 2. So what you have to do in step 2? So step 2 says fold x2 of m to obtain x2 of minus m. Right? Now let's go and see that. So I'm going to fold this x2 of m. So I will get x2 of of minus m. You know this 4 represent what? That it is a 4 point sequence. Right? It's just a representation we have seen earlier also. So just focus here, we have to take now x2 of minus m, which is what folded version of x2 of m. So now here you will get 1. So now you will get here 2, so 3 and then 4. So hope it is clear to you, right? So we have already, we got x2 of minus m. Now step 3. Step 3 says like periodically extend x2 of minus m with a period of n. So here we have a period of 4, right? So I'm going to periodically extend this. So I have this many cells only. So if you want to periodically extend this, so it is 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, what will come? 4, 3, 2, 1 will come, right? That is how you can extend periodically. Is it clear? So you have to focus here, this part, in this particular case, right? So this is what, these are what, 
numbers these numbers are the samples obtained by periodic extension this is what periodic extension hope it is clear to you fine now let's go next so in the fourth step what we have to do now we have to shift x2 of minus m q times to obtain right we already know expression so x2 of minus m you have to extend okay q times to obtain this particular thing right where right shift you have to do a right shift if q is what positive and if q is negative you have to do a left shift okay and the sample of x3 of q at n is equal to q is what basically we already know the formula of this right circular convolution so x3 of q is equal to what summation of x1 of m into x2 of q minus m you know subscript n where the limit of m ranges from 0 to n minus 1 right so if the n is 4 here so it will go from m is equal to 0 to m is equal to 4 minus 1 that is 3 clear now once it is done now determine the product sequence of this for one period i will show you i will show you this and at last same whatever we were doing like some of the samples of product sequence x3 of q means x3 of n at n is equal to q and this is this process you have to repeat for every value of n then you will get your final sequence x3 of n which is nothing but a circular convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n so how to do these things i'm going to explain you this don't worry let's see one by one so i hope up to this it is clear right now let's see x2 of 1 minus n so this is what x2 of minus m right now what will be the value for x2 of 1 minus m so here 1 represent what in the generic expression it was q so q is equal to 1 so i said if q is positive then right shift then you have to do a right shift so simply go for right shift so now it will start from here 4 3 2 1 4 3 right now x2 of 2 minus m here also q is positive so now one more right shift so it will start from here 4 3 2 1 4 clear now x2 of 3 minus m so basically one more right shift so 4 3 2 1 it is done right now let's go and calculate so basically let's go and see when n is equal to 0 so when n is equal to 0 x3 of 0 will become what this expression right x1 of m into x2 of if you see this it is what minus m so now let's go for this so where is x1 of m and where is x2 of minus m see that part so if you go for this plot so x1 of m so this right this particular line okay and x2 of minus m so this line so what are the common instances from here and this all are common so 2 into 1 so 2 into 1 2 so right here 2 okay plus plus 1 into 4 right 1 into 4 that is 4 plus 2 into 3 6 okay plus minus 1 into 2 that is minus 2 so overall you got what 2 plus 4 okay plus 6 minus 2 that will be equal to what 10 so when n is equal to 0 the value of x3 of 0 is what 10 we calculated this now let's go for the another instance when n is equal to 1 so when n is equal to 1 so x1 of 1 x3 of 1 right so which term is required x1 of m and x2 of 1 minus m we already know let's go and do the same so this is x1 of m and this is what basically x2 of 1 minus m so what are the common points again this right 
So 2 into 2, 4 plus 1 into 1, 1 plus 2 into 4, 8, okay, plus minus 1 into 3, that is minus 3. So overall, for this, we got what boss? We got 4 plus 1 plus 8 minus 3, which will give you what? 4 plus 1, 5 minus 3, that is 2 plus 8, 10. It will give you again 10. Now next, next instant. So when n is equal to 2, which term is required? This and this. So we already know x1 of m here, it is present here and x2 of 2 minus m is present here. So again multiply and add 2 into 3, 6 plus 1 into 2, 2 plus 2 into 1, 2 plus minus 1 into 4, that is minus 4. So overall we got what here? we got 6 plus 2 plus 2 minus 4 that is what so 6 plus 2 8 plus 2 10 minus 4 is 6 6 we got here now last when n is equal to 3 so when n is equal to 3 this is required and this these two terms you have to multiply and add on so basically 2 into 4 8 1 into 3 3 2 into 2 4 minus 1 into 1 minus 1 so overall it will give you 8 right plus 3 plus 4 minus 1 so it will be equal to what 14 so final x3 of n final output will be equal to what 10 at n is equal to 0 right then again 10 we got then 6 then 14 that's all you have to do so this is what the steps to perform circular convolution using tabular method. So if you have any doubt in this, you can ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching.